In this video, I am going to introduce agnostic pack learning along with generalizations of this concept. In a previous video, I told you about pack learning. If you don't know what pack learning is, I strongly recommend you check out the previous video before going further in this video. So pack learning is very interesting. However, it only applies to a very specific setting and some assumptions of this setting may not be verified in some applications. In particular, pack learning assumes that the set of hypotheses we want to draw a prediction function from contains the real underlying prediction function we want to be computing. Evidently, this condition is easily satisfied if we consider all prediction functions or hypotheses we should consider. However, in addition to the minor computation term trouble that this raises, doing so would not be a good idea because of overfitting. In fact, in practice, it's often been shown that it's much better to compute prediction functions that do not even agree with all the data of the sample set. A basic way, among many others, to implement this idea is to consider a small hypothesis class, although I should say that the cardinality of the hypothesis is not always the right measure of its size. Instead, the concept of VC dimension, which I shall mention in another video, can be argued to be much more relevant, at least in some settings. In any case, doing so allows to prevent overfitting. However, doing so also means that we run into the risk of removing the real underlying prediction function from a hypothesis class, which renders the quest for the computation of the real prediction function kind of hopeless. In particular, if f is not in the hypothesis class, then the machine learning algorithm is clearly not pack learnable. What this is really saying is that pack learnability is not a relevant concept in most settings in practice. However, we can define a variant of it that will allow to still prove meaningful statements about machine learning a prediction function that is not in the hypothesis class. Namely, we say that a machine learning problem is agnostic pack learnable if there is a machine learning algorithm such that for any prediction function f, which we might still want to restrict to some function space, but not necessarily the hypothesis class. It may be outside the hypothesis class. If we consider any such prediction function, any probability distribution d, any epsilon delta positive, and any sample size n larger than some polynomial in epsilon and delta, with probability at least 1 minus delta on samples Sn of size n, with data drawn iid from d, the prediction function computed with our machine learning algorithm and the sample set Sn does not make many more mispredictions than the best hypothesis of our hypothesis class would. In essence, the machine learning algorithm with high probability picks a hypothesis that's nearly as good as the best available hypothesis. Now, following the spirit of the original pack learning concept, we have measured here the quality of a hypothesis by how often it makes correct prediction. However, this is only one of many ways to measure the quality of a hypothesis and depending on context, there may be better ways to do so. For instance, if the labels are real numbers that represent, for instance, a financial value of an object with features x, it may be good enough to predict a value close to the real value. In such a case where the original topology of the sets of labels matter, it might be better to measure the quality of a hypothesis by a loss function that measures the expected distance from the real value, or perhaps the expected square of the distance. Another point that can be generalized is the fact that we have been assuming that the real prediction function was deterministic. However, this may not be the case, and it could be meaningful to consider hypotheses that yield stochastic prediction function as well. And indeed, in many cases in practice, the features of a data does not suffice to predict its label. In such a case, it may be better to judge the quality of a hypothesis using some kind of probability distance, like the KL divergence, which is not really a distance, but it's very good to measure the idea of 
the proximity between two probability measures or if we also care about the topology and the metric of the sets of labels we might uh, prefer to use the kantorovich wasserstein metric if you have no idea of what these are stay tuned i will hopefully eventually tackle these on one data